walked into the chemistry department and have him I all walked into the chairman's office with all my bags and everything. And he looked at me and he says, who the hell are you? <laughs> And I said, I'm, I'm Harry Gray. You offered me a job. He says, oh, yeah, Harry Gray, we did offer you a job. Glad you're here. Here's a book. You're teaching a course tomorrow. Hi, this is Jed McCosco at Wake Forest University and Academic Influence. And today we have visiting us from Caltech, Professor Harry Gray, who is a chemist par excellence. So, uh, Professor Gray, I want to know, did you get to work on the electron transfer system that Mel Calvin was doing at, at UC Berkeley. And was that part of your repertoire or did you work with other people when you started uh, applying your uh, uh, inorganic chemistry tools to some of the things that happen inside of life? I never worked with Mel Calvin uh, but uh, in research, but he was a good friend. And I uh, was on committees with him. I remember I was on a nice committee in Colorado at the what's uh, now uh, the um, Renewable Energy Institute um, in Colorado. Uh, we were, Mel and I were involved as advisors when they started that. So we had a lot of interaction and we were good friends. And I did um, uh, work on some systems that he worked on, but I never worked directly with him. Uh, so the, he was a pioneer in photosynthesis uh, but he never really got involved in the kind of uh, fundamental electron transfer work uh, uh, that I got involved in. So my work was really sort of orthogonal to his work. But I think he followed some of my work uh, before he passed away. And we were very good friends. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and uh, I can see how they'd be orthogonal. He was really trying to uncover the proteins uh, that... that uh, yeah, he the uncovered the, Cal the Calvin cycle, in the, yes. in which he won the Nobel Prize for. And I was more interested in the uh, electron transfer chains and, uh, and how they uh, operated uh, through, uh, 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 th through the photosynthetic reaction center and, and how the uh, holes are delivered to the... Uh, the catalytic center that makes oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and th that was my main interest. And he was, some of his co-workers were very involved in the oxygen evolution stuff. Uh, uh, but of course, he uh, he was the guy who was responsible for the Calvin cycle, the, the dark reaction that mm -hmm. carbohydrates. And so uh, uh, my work was complementary, uh, and we talked about it. And I think he... Uh, I think he liked it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure, sure he did. I'm not sure. He was a pretty tough character, and he might have, <laughs> he might have thought that I was off doing crazy things. Uh, a lot of people did. Uh, yeah. um, uh, I liked him a lot. He was a r really uh, cool guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to meet him when he was late in life. Um, well, I bet it was really nice for you to see how quickly uh, your ligand field theory took on. I mean, I, I learned about it in the early 1990s when I was an undergraduate, and it was taught alongside the mean field theorem. Can you tell us a little bit about what the breakthrough was that allowed you to go beyond the mean field theorem? Uh, yeah, well... Uh you know, the crystal field theory was the uh, physics theory that I started with. And uh, and I was offended by the crystal field theory uh, because, first of all, it was invented by physicists. And, uh, and chemists, uh, uh, I think physicists, uh, look down on us as sort of second-rate physicists. So we, we have a, a thing about the physicists. But the reason I uh, was offended by it, it took away the chemical bonds. There weren't any bonds in, uh, in the crystal field theory. They, they repla replaced chemical bonds with point charges and point dipoles. And they could only explain the colors of compounds that the uh, first row transition metal ions in aqueous solution. Uh, they couldn't uh, explain... Uh, what we call charge transfer transitions and uh, and uh, transitions that we call intervalence transitions and things like Prussian blue, some of the deeply colored things. They couldn't explain the color of permanganate, potassium permanganate. And some, uh, most of the things I was interested in, the crystal field theory couldn't explain. 
And Paul and Linus Pauling's theory was even worse. Um, valence bond theory couldn't explain the colors of anything. And so um, I decided to um, uh, that Robert Mulliken at Chicago had invented something for organic chemistry called molecular orbital theory. And I thought, uh, but it couldn't be applied to inorganic compounds because uh, inorganic compounds have metals and ligands and there's a lot of charge separation in the bonds, and Mulliken's theory could not account for that. And so what I did, the breakthrough I did, was to uh, uh, to develop a, a way of correcting the, the diagonal elements of energy in calculations for charge. And so I could uh, I could iterate the system and correct for the charges of on the metal ions and the ligands, put the bonds back in through me the, this modified Mulliken theory, and then I took the best part, the only good part of the crystal field theory, which is the atomic physics of electron electron interaction, so you can calculate excited state energies, multi-electron excited state. So I made this hybrid uh, Mulliken uh, MO model for the bonds to put the bonds back in uh, with, uh, with my corrected diagonal elements. And I uh, introduced the uh, one center electron-electron uh, interaction theory from crystal field theory. So that... Uh, that hybrid model is what's called ligand field theory. And I put that together and did some of the first calculations of it in the early 60s. And the first calculation I did was in Copenhagen uh, as a postdoc. And by the way, just for your information, based on my development of that theory, uh, I got a job. I got an offer from Columbia University chemistry department without an interview. Oh, wow. I, I got a that is I, I had I had not applied for a job there. Uh, one day uh, a letter appeared in the mail in Copenhagen from the chemistry department chairman Charlie Beckman at Columbia whom I did not know and I'd never been at Columbia University and I hadn't applied. They didn't have my CV, didn't have anything, but they had some information about my work in Copenhagen and so they simply made me an offer of a uh, of a, a faculty job at Columbia. Wow. Uh, I took it. <laughs> <laughs> I took it when I showed up at Columbia from, from uh, I took a flight from, uh, a four, it took 44 hours on uh, Icelandic Airlines to get from Copenhagen to New York because <laughs> we stopped about six times. And I uh, arrived, I was 25 years old. I, I arrived with all these bags and I, I got in, I stuck my head and uh, took a taxi from what was called Idlewild Airport then. It's called JFK now. I took a taxi to Columbia 116th and Broadway and walked into the chemistry department and have him I all walked into the chairman's office with all my bags and everything. And he looked at me and he says, who the hell are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm, I'm Harry Gray. You offered me a job. He says, oh, yeah, Harry Gray, we did offer you a job. Glad you're here. Here's a book. You're teaching a course tomorrow. <laughs> so that, that was my, uh, that was my, uh, that's what the uh, theory got to me. It got me a job at Columbia University without an interview, without a CV, with, without a, any proposals, without anything that you have to go through now to get a job. Wow, that's great. Well, you've got to tell us more about your interaction with uh, Harry, uh, with Charlie Beckman. Um, we all know Beckman, you know, centrifuge and stuff like well, that. Well, that so. was Charlie Beckman was not Arnold Beckman. Oh, okay. You're talking, so. uh, Jed, you're talking about Arnold Beckman, the great inventor. I, found, I, I met him much later. Okay. Charlie Beckman right, so. was, uh, was not any relation to Arnold Beckman. Okay. I don't so need just to tell you. Any, I don't need to. Tell you any more about him except he offered me a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you worked with Arnold Beckman, and that's yeah. I did a lot. I did uh, a lot of work with Arnold Beckman. I can tell you about that if you like. Um, yeah. um, uh, uh, I'm very talkative, Jed, so you can uh, shut me up. 
Well, uh, just just but, tell uh, us how you first met him and how did yeah, you I end will, up going I will, from... I will. I, you okay. know, I went to, uh, uh, I did well at Columbia. I was uh, promoted to a full professor in three in three years or so, um, uh, because I was uh, developing theory and doing all sorts of new things and 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 I was very very lucky, Jed, because because I got into this field uh, very early, extremely early. Uh, inorganic chemistry was undergoing this renaissance. It had been a very boring field up until theory got into it. And people started understanding mechanisms and, uh, and and spectroscopy and all of this stuff, which they had no idea before. I mean, inorganic chemistry before the 60s was really, uh, the courses were really dedicated to understanding the production of, of sulfuric acid <laughs> and exciting things like that. Of course, then the theory came in and mechanisms came in, and all of a sudden the, uh, the inorganic took off. It was called the renaissance of inorganic chemistry. And all of a sudden it exploded. And there are only about three or four young folks like me in the country who had been trained, who knew anything about this new theory. So we were all in enormous demand. And we, we got multiple offers. We got offers from schools all over the country because uh, the universities across this country had no courses. They weren't teaching this new stuff because there, weren't, there wasn't anybody around to teach it. And so there were just a few of us. There was Dick Holm. Uh, who, uh, there was a guy named Al Cotton. Uh, Dick Holm and uh, Dick Carlin and, uh, uh, and f just a few of us, John Fackler, me, Alan Davison, and, and we were getting offers from every place because we were the young Turks in the field. <laughs> and so, was the guy uh, who so, wrote the uh, textbooks, right? So I had, I had multiple offers. I had offers from Caltech and Stanford and every place you can think of during this time, but I stuck it out at Columbia and trying to build the field at Columbia. Uh, but Columbia's department was pretty small and, and, and was dedicated with emphasized organic and physical chemistry. And they told me that, look, Harry, you're doing great here, but, uh, uh, but we don't, we, we just don't, we're not big enough to expand your field. Uh, so that's the reason I took the offer from Caltech. I see. Like, uh, yeah. Caltech, uh, J.D. Roberts was the chair there, and they kept after me to take the job. And I finally said, okay, I'll take it, even though I didn't want to leave New York. I love New York. Uh, our family loved New York. Uh, uh, we didn't want to leave Columbia, but it was clear that if I wanted to build, build this field in directions like energy, Mm -hmm. Ganometallic chemistry and biology, something called bioinorganic chemistry, which I got started in. If I wanted to build it in all those directions, solid state and solar energy conversions, or if I wanted to build a field by hiring more faculty, I had to go to I had to go to some place that was really big enough to do that. And Caltech was. Uh, Jack Roberts said, "We want you to come here and build the field, hire people and." Uh, and really cover all areas of the field because we're very, very interested in building this. So that's why I decided to uh, move to Pasadena in 1966. Wow, that's amazing that you went over there. And, now, um, and then, you're, you're, uh, then how I met Arnold Beckman. I got to Caltech. Mm -hmm. Arnold Beckman was the chairman of the board at Caltech. He was the chairman of the board of trustees. So as soon as I got to Caltech, they asked me to give a big talk uh, a big talk uh, about my work in front of of uh, alums and the board of trustees and and all of these folks in 1967. A big crowd. I talked about how I'd gotten into biological, my uh, got the theory of my theory into biological areas and and particularly into iron uh, metabolism and iron storage and things like that. And so I gave a talk on how I'd gotten into this. And Arnold Beckman and his wife, Mabel, were in the second row. Uh, I hadn't met them yet, but they were in the second row. But I knew he didn't know who I was, but I knew who he was because he was extremely famous for his invention of the pH meter and, his, and mainly for his invention of the spectrophotometer, the quartz spectrophotometer called the Beckman DU, which I had done most of my PhD thesis was done on that instrument. 
And so he was a big hero of mine, and he was in the second row with his wife. And and uh, normally I would be nervous, but I'm not nervous. Uh, uh, I love to talk, and I absolutely, uh, I only get nervous when people don't let me talk. And so uh, I really, I, re- I really went all out. I mean, I gave it everything. I was, I was going crazy in this talk, and uh, and uh, you can imagine what it's like because I talk to people in the audience. I call them out and. And I think in the middle of the thing, I said, Dr. Beckman, I bet uh, you don't understand what I'm talking about, <laughs> do you? <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So after the talk uh, was over, he and Mrs. Beckman, Mabel Beckman, came down to the front to meet me. They wanted to meet me. And he said, uh, he said well, we enjoyed your talk. And, and then uh, Mabel Beckman looked at me and, and looked at Arnold and she said, Arnold, she said, I didn't understand a word this young man said, but boy, did I like the way he said it. <laughs> 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 and, and, and Arnold gave me the thumbs up then. And I, I knew that I, I knew I had a lifelong friend. Oh, that's great. And so we, we bonded, we, we bonded, uh, and, uh, and we became, my wife Shirley and I, became really close friends with the Beckmans. Um, when I became chairman of the division at Caltech, we met with them essentially every week. We would go down to Orange County and, and uh, he would take us to the, uh, the Newport, Newport Yacht Club. <laughs> uh, and um, where he was member number four. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, uh, he lived to be 104. And so even then he was uh, quite elderly, and uh, but he was member number four of the Newport Beach Yacht Club. And uh, the, the next guy living was, I think, member number 170. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's how I got to know him. We became close friends oh, together. And, uh, and when I became chairman, he... Uh, he suggested that you know he would like to make a gift to Caltech, and and uh, we we worked on his first gift, which was the Beckman Synthesis Center. And then he came to me later and said, "Well, I like what you did there. I want to I want to do something really big at Caltech, and that's what led to the Beckman Institute." So we worked together on that, and and I I uh, I suggested several things to him that he didn't like. And finally, I came up with the idea of building an institute that would develop technology, that would develop new instruments and technology, which is what, of course, he did. And he, uh, it, would, it would be an institute to develop tools and had centers that would support research by folks doing biology and chemistry and medical research. And so that really hit the spot with him. And he said, okay, that's it, Harry, I want you to do that. And so uh, that, that was the, Be- that's the Beckman Institute and it still is. Awesome. Well, thank you for giving us that background. And I'm sure we could have such a wonderful conversation about all the things you've done. <laughs> yeah. But since our time is short, we're just going to have to thank you one more time for joining us yeah. today. It was really, well, really this has fun. been this has been such a wonderful uh, time to meet you and Brian and and uh, your daughter was wonderful. Uh, she's a wonderful young lady. I'm sure you're super proud of her. I am. And maybe I've talked her into going into chemistry. <laughs> you may have. You may have. So we'll see. So thanks <laughs> thanks so much, Jed, for this. And thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> <laughs>